Hey, welcome to the channel. It's Friday. It's about uh, probably 11, 30, 12 o'clock and I'm up here in the city and somebody had asked me to find a find out if a restaurant called Billy's Italian Restaurant was open today or still open. So I figured I'd come up here and uh, look around. I'm, I'm on Campang Din Road and uh, I'm on the north end of it towards Tape Road or uh, yeah, Tape Road. But we're going to walk down the alleys here and see what we can find out. Uh, got a kind of a cool story for you today. Um, it's kind of kind of interesting, but it. Uh, hello, hello. No, I'm okay. I'm making a YouTube video. You want to be on YouTube? Say hello to everybody. How is business? Is business good? So so. So so, not real good. A lot of foreigners coming here now. Mm -hmm. Good. You're on YouTube. Say hello to YouTube. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Thank you. I'll see you later. Yeah. Bye bye. Enjoy your. What are you eating? Soy, yummy. Wow. Wow. Fish. Yeah. yeah. Mu nam tok. Oh, nam tok mu. Yes, yeah, Very good. Yeah. I don't know English. Maybe pork. Pork. Pork, yeah. I'll see you okay, later. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> That's funny. Usually they don't like to be on camera and I don't like to intrude on them, but if they're going to yell to me, I'll, I'll put them on camera. It's uh, maybe debatable whether I'm going to get anything done today because it's raining. But. Uh, We'll try to do, maybe I, might, maybe I can stay under these canopies. It was raining real hard when I came up. Uh, we're going to get underneath here. I'll shut it off until the rain stops. Okay, it's just a light rain. Not too bad. It poured when I came up, but the skies look clear up here, so I figured I could get a walk in today and get a video done. But uh, anyway, the story is, it goes back to 1995. There was a guy by the name of Steve Royce, and uh, he was a journalist in New Jersey. And uh, apparently he was uh, working for a TV station, and he had won some awards and stuff. And, and uh, But he ends up quitting his job and at, the, uh, at the TV station. He goes out to California, and he starts working out there, stays out there for a while, and as best as I can figure, he didn't do too well out there in California, so he came back to New Jersey and uh, he opened up a sports memorabilia shop and, and ran that for a while and sounds like he, uh, he didn't do too well at it. And uh, so he ends up closing that down and he gets the big idea he's going to go back out to California and try to land another job. Well, he gets out to California and uh, couldn't find solid work out there in California as a journalist. And I'm going to stop here and I'm going to kind of explain how I'm going to tell this story. I'm going to kind of tell it in, in three different phases. One is going to be the phase that it happened. Two is going to be the phase of what he says happened. And three is going to be my uh, analysis based on my past experience as a police officer, what I think happened. Well, here's Billy's Italian restaurant. And let me ask this guy if it's still open. Yeah, it looks open. Yeah, it's open. Yeah. Your restaurant open? Soon. Soon? Oh. Soon. But you're open every day? Uh, closed on Sunday. Closed on Sunday. So you're, you're, in, you're not, COVID didn't shut you down. Good, good. I had, I have a, a, I have a YouTube channel, and I had a subscriber that wanted me to come by and make sure you were still open. <laughs> yes. Good. We're open. Okay, great. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. Okay. Oh. Have a nice day. You too. So anyway, back to the story. He goes out to California, and it's somewhere. As far as I could tell, it was somewhere in Hollywood, California. And he links up with a Asian gang, 
somehow or another. I don't know how you would do that. But uh, anyway, he links up with a with an Asian gang in in, uh, in Hollywood. And then the next thing you know, he's on a flight to Bangkok. And he gets to Bangkok and he meets up with supposedly the other end of the, uh, the gang in Bangkok. And they set him up to fly to Amsterdam, from Bangkok to Amsterdam, and carry a load for him. Well, the load happened to be uh, six pounds of heroin. So, I, from the best I can tell, he stays there for a couple days, and then he he heads to uh, Dong Moon, which would have been the airport at the time, and uh, he doesn't make it very far. They uh, they snatch him up, and they catch him going through uh, you know going through the airport carrying six kilos of. Uh, heroin headed for Amsterdam now why he would be headed for Amsterdam you know I don't know you know there's no mention of any any way to get from Amsterdam back to uh, you know back to the United States or even back to Bangkok but uh, anyway he gets caught and they throw him in the jail jail just like they do everybody else well after he gets caught, he said, I'm an undercover reporter. And I, infilt I was doing a story on the drug trade in from Thailand to the United States. And my plans were to come here and infiltrate the drug trade. And then when they uh, set me up to, to uh, make, a, make a, a run for them, I was going to tell him no, and I did. He said, you know, when, when the time came for me to make the run, I told him I wasn't going to do it. And uh, what he says then, he says that uh, the gang told him that if he didn't do it, they were going to kill his mother and, and kill his son. And uh, to make a long story short, the courts didn't believe him. Uh, the American Embassy didn't believe him. They, they wouldn't even give him the right time of day. And he, uh, he ended up going to trial. And it, it's funny, I'm going to leave links to the story. There's a spot in the, in the story where his attor the attorney that was handling his case came out on the steps of the courthouse. After he was sentenced to life in prison, that, uh, you know, their that was their defense that he was doing an undercover story to write a you know a piece on the drug trade but the attorney said the only problem was he was the only one telling that story there wasn't anybody to back him up and uh you know the, the thai government didn't believe him and uh the embassy didn't believe him the u.s embassy didn't believe him either not that they would have done anything. I think I'm going to go to the right here. Yeah, I am. But anyway, he uh, he ended up pleading guilty, and uh, he got he, he he got life in prison. Um, he was basically sentenced to the to, to the big tiger in in Bangkok. And the first year he was there, he had an attorney back in the United States that was trying to help him. And they tried to get him pardoned by the king because every year on the king's birthday he would pardon, you know, people. That, the king would basically uh, cut the jail population about in half, pardoning people and setting them free. But uh, he didn't get it. And uh, he had tried and tried and tried to, you know, find different ways to, uh, to get out. But he ended up in, in 2002 they have an exchange program where after you've served eight years of your sentence, you can be transferred back to your home country. And in 2002, he was transferred back to the United States. And as far as I can tell, he's picked up by the Marshal Service on the 5th of December, 2002. And uh, that's the last I can track him. I can't track him in any federal prison. So my best assumption is that uh, 
they released him as soon as he got back on American soil. And they do what they do is they, when you get back to the United States, they change your sentence to hello to what it would normally be in the United States if you had been sentenced in the United States. So basically, they cut him loose. But uh, it was kind of you know it's a crazy story, and. I'm going to poke holes in his, his, his defense of, of working undercover. Number one, I don't care who you are, you don't engage in criminal activity without the, uh, without the consent of law enforcement. Now, had he you know, contacted the DEA or something like that and told the DEA that, you know, what he was doing and how far in he was and, and all that. Before he made the trip, he might have had a defense. Uh, but he didn't. He didn't call anybody. There was only one indication throughout his whole journey from, from uh, Hollywood to Bangkok. There was some place on a customs declaration or, or some form that he said that he was going to Bangkok to write a story. And that was the only thing. But uh, the only other person that would back him up was his son. and. They didn't put much weight on that, but you know, it's just uh, when you look at the totalitary part of this, he's coming from New Jersey without a job. He gets to California and he can't find a job. Hello. Hi. Laundry? Yes. Oh, okay. Cool. If, you, if you're here and you need laundry done, come down. This lady will do it. You just hit the buzzer there. Um, so more than likely, I think we'll turn right here because I know where the left goes. Let's walk down to the right. Tape Lane 4. I've got my Strava on, so I shouldn't have any problem ma mapping this out. But, uh, you know, if you're going to do something like that, I mean, actually write a story about the drug trade, the first thing that you would do if you were gonna involve yourself with criminals is you notify law enforcement and you get some, you know, you get some help. <laughs> you don't just go out on your own and, uh, and start dealing with drug dealers and things like that and expect to uh, get a uh, get out of jail free card when you get caught. But uh, he didn't do that. He, he didn't, you know, he didn't do anything. I mean, even when he got to the point where they were threatening him, had he notified the DEA or notified the embassy or the consulate, uh, you know, they would have helped him. And, you know, they might have got the guys that were, were smuggling, the, you know, trying to smuggle the drugs out of the country. But he didn't do any of that. And the other thing that, that really, to me, throws a complete bullshit meter just peaked is when you're doing something like that and you're posing as somebody else you don't let people know your true identity so if they didn't know his true identity how would they threaten his mother and father my thing is is they knew right you know he was upfront about who he was upfront about what he was going to do and uh, got his ass caught and then had to think up an excuse real quick. Now, he may have thought up the excuse before he committed the crime and thought that would get him out of it, but boy, he was dead wrong. And uh, how he managed to do eight years in, in the Big Tiger, I don't know. Um, there, I'm going to leave. Look, look, there's a. He did an uh, interview with AP. I can't post it because it'd be copyright, but I'll leave links to it in the description and, and you'll see him. The guy's kind of a sleazeball. Uh, you know, he's talking through the bars to the reporters and, and uh, you know, I just, I just get the sleazeball feel when I, you know, when I see him talking. But uh, when he got released in, in 2002 and sent back to the States, uh, one of the news media asked him what he thought about the American consulate and he didn't have anything good to say about him. And, and I don't know what he expected. You know, I mean, it's just like this, this basketball player that's caught in Russia. She's the product of her own, you know, own stupidity. 
you bring drugs into a foreign country and uh, you know you get caught you're on your own the American government can't get you out they're not supposed to even get involved in it now if they do in this situation with this with this basketball player in Russia uh, then they needed to need to do it for every person that's that's incarcerated you know in different countries around the world that's American they just don't need to pick one person and, and help them out uh, you know that wouldn't be fair but uh, I'm gonna pause the video for just a second here I keep forgetting to tighten up I keep forgetting to tighten up my belt when I go out walking like this now I think there's a guest house down here that I had wanted to show everybody and the last time I came down he was closed down but he said he was opening and I think it's down here really a nice guy we'll walk down here and see you see if he's here but uh, you know even when we had reporters back at, at our department that would they'd kind of skate the the borders trying to uh, find out about criminal activity they were always careful to uh, to let us know what they were doing and most often times than none I'd tell them you just stay away from it you know don't get involved in it it's not your job and you know when we catch them you can write a story on it but uh, oh, I can't even get through here no this isn't it this isn't it different alley let me walk back out this way I'll shut it off till I get back out on the street here we go but uh, you know my advice was always to uh, tell them to uh, stick to writing stories if you're that hard up for a news story you know write about something else yeah this is neat I don't know what this guy's guest house is oh me me sada wait a minute Makasa. Huh. Hello. Oh, this looks nice. You can get your food right down here. Hello. Body cop. And then you get your laundry right across the street and Unchi juice bar. Huh. See, all these places have opened up now they were all closed down the last time I walked through here I tried to get Lek to get me let me buy one of these things so I could pedal her around the neighborhood she goes where are we gonna store it I said well it's gonna be on the front porch and she won and I lost <laughs> but she was probably thinking right I don't need one of those things this place is coming along good too when I walked through here the last time they were just building it looks nice Sixty four house artwork, art tattoo, and we'll come out here on Tape Road. Mano Casino Hollow Food. Oh. Yeah, a lot of places opened up. I might even escape the rain today. And then you get the temple over here on the left hand side. It's a beautiful temple. This is right on Tape Road. Right across from a real good Indian restaurant. Walk in here a little ways for those of you who haven't seen this place before. It's really neat. Definitely check this temple out. It's right on Tape Road. Uh, probably about 200 meters east of uh, Type A Gate. It's on the right hand side. Definitely check it out if you come here. Now let's see if I can't get out of here. You can always tell tourists they've got the whitest legs. <laughs> But we'll come out here and probably turn right. Big old tree. But that's my story for today. And uh, my advice to anybody coming here, 
don't get involved in any kind of criminal activity. It's not worth it. Uh, all you're doing is making all the foreigners that live here look bad. Now oh, this lady's cooking fried banana. And if you get stuck in jail here, it's not going to be pleasant. You're not going to be happy. So come here, have a good time, and, uh, and stay out of trouble. These people that get involved in, in smuggling drugs, I mean, I, I looked on the internet, and I could probably do a video a day on the uh, foreigners that have been caught smuggling drugs in Thailand. This is really cool, too. Got a lot of old stuff here. Guy over there's having his lunch right there on the sidewalk. Gateway coffee roasters, huh? I've never noticed that before. It's up on the second story. All kinds of old stuff in here. You know, if you want to come up and get yourself a souvenir or something to bring back to the to your country, this is the place to go. I'm not sure about Buddhist statues. I don't know if you can take Buddhist statues out of the country. They say you can't, but uh, I, don't, I don't know how, how that works. But you got other stuff here that you can get. Pretty neat. Knives. I don't think you can take a knife out. I don't think... Uh, I think immigration or customs would enjoy that too much. Let's see where we come out here. You can see the sky is just, it's just real cloudy. Uh, we've not had any floods here, but um, it's not saying that it couldn't flood any day now. Little lady, looks like she's selling coffee on the side of the street. Yeah, that's exactly what she's doing. Chinese medicine, I believe. Yeah, Chinese herbs and medicine. In that place, I don't know what they're going to do with it. Jewelry shop. Oh. Really not bad prices on silver either. Sterling silver. Hmm. I'm not a jewelry person, so I don't really uh, look at that kind of stuff. I've had one ring that I bought in Bangkok years ago, and I wore it for, gosh, 13, 14 years. And I've lost it somewhere. And it was it's funny, if I ever see it, I'll know it because it was re really unique. I bought it at JJ Market back the first time I came to Thailand. And uh, it was very unique. Never seen one like it before. Now I think I'm going to turn right here at this street. May get me back to the car. Maybe I have to go one more down. But I'm going to turn here. Okay, walk. walk <laughs> Exercise, because I have big tummy. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, though. Yeah, I'll walk down this road and then catch another road to the left. But yeah, you, you know, when you... Some of the stuff I have found on the internet 
when I start looking for bizarre tales are just uh, just amazing. And I think one of the next videos I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to do one of biz bizarre stories in Thailand. Because the stuff that I've come across is just, you know, it's just mind-boggling. But it's all true, you know. Um, it's one thing I try not to... Uh, I don't want to tell stories about stuff that's not true. Um, I'm going to stick to... Uh, you know, the actual facts. I don't know where this is gonna come out. Bartha's Village. I think I will, I may have already, no, I don't think I've walked by here. I'll go left down here. A lot of places to get your clothes done. I don't know if that goes through or not. I don't believe it does. Hello? Does that go through? Does that go through all the way to the next road? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, that's pretty. That is cool. Let's see where this takes me. I've not been back through here. Uh, he says it goes through. I don't think it'll go through, but we'll try. May go back here to this, just to this hotel. I don't know. We'll find out. It's beautiful back here. See where it takes me anyway. may take me back on that road I was on before. Oh, okay, this was the gate that I didn't go through. No, it's not. Let's go this way. i look back that way. Nope, I'm gonna go this way. Nope, this ends at somebody's house. All right, let's see where we're going here. Wow, that's really neat. I think I just walked around in a big circle. We'll find out as soon as I get to the street here. Yeah, I did. All right. Well, listen, I'm going to close this video out, video out now. And uh, I appreciate you all checking it out. And uh, watch for the live streams. They're coming. Uh, I got some of this stuff in yesterday, and I played with it a little bit. So Leck and I should be doing live streams probably by sometime next week or maybe even the weekend if we get some spare time. But I appreciate it. Remember, click like, subscribe to the channel, leave me some comments, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.